Well, thank you for joining us this afternoon. This is the next in a continuing series on best practices in revenue assurance governance for CEOs and CFOs. And the topic today is revenue assurance department positioning. So anybody that's been involved in revenue assurance for any amount of time at all knows that there is an ongoing controversy about the where exactly should the revenue assurance department report. It's a question that's continually asked and debated and then addresses many of the core issues that are critical to the effectiveness of your revenue assurance team. There are six major categories of information that have been identified as the most important things for you to consider when you're discussing where to position your revenue assurance department. First of all, the manpower allocation. How big should the group be? Second of all, the work focus and how their work should be allocated to different functions. Thirdly, the posture. Do you want a revenue insurance team that's mostly proactive or reactive? Fourth, the domains, and these include the technology domains, the line of business domains, and the operational areas they will work with. And finally, the key question of executive sponsorship, who wants to be responsible for this function? So when it comes to manpower allocation, many people think that it, the Revenue Assurance Department should be as small as possible. There are some telcos that have only part-time people doing Revenue Assurance. There are others that have 20 or 30 Revenue Assurance Analysts. I know one telco that has 120 Revenue Assurance Analysts. So the question is, how big should the department be for you? And that really boils down to your corporate culture. How big are the other groups? And how big is the, are the problems that you want the Revenue Assurance Department to face? But at the end of the day, a gut reaction that says Revenue Assurance people should have three people or two people or 10 people, that's a really good indicator for you to help thinking the problem through. The second issue is the focus of the work. There are four Revenue Assurance functions. Forensics, root cause analysis, investigations, basically to work as a troubleshooter and a random investigator who goes wherever the problems happen to be and jumps on them, figures out what's wrong, and helps management to resolve them so that the revenue loss can be minimized. The second way to look at the revenue assurance group is in terms of controls, which is much more of the proactive view. So in the proactive view, revenue assurance teams go looking for risks before they get out of hand. They get in front of the risks, they build the controls so that the risks never blossom. Typically, revenue assurance teams are either forensic fo focused or controls focused. The forensic much more in terms of being reactive and the controls much more in being proactive. We also see organizations put heavy investment in revenue assurance to help do corrections, that is, to help address issues where changes to policies or procedures or systems need to be made in order to correct the problems that are causing the leakage in the first place. So in this case, revenue assurance teams are more project managers and managers of problem resolution for the CEO or the CFO. And then for those organizations where the revenue assurance team is heavily involved with Sarbanes-Oxley or heavy audit regimens, we have revenue assurance teams working heavily in compliance. The next area is the area of posture. And this is a really good way to help you think about when you think about revenue assurance, what do you want them to be doing? Do you mostly see them as a reactive group running around addressing problems that are coming up? So if you have a lot of crisis, if you're running in crisis mode, then having a revenue assurance team that's good at reacting to problems and good at the forensic skills is gonna be critical. If on the other hand, you envision revenue assurance as a preemptive team, a team that is more analytical, more anticipatory, and more about getting in front of the problems, then you're gonna want them to have a proactive posture. So what you really wanna think about is how much, how proactive do I want them to be and how reactive do I really want them to be? When it comes to the key question of where should they report, the statistics are clear. Over 80% of revenue insurance departments report to the CFO. Now, a lot of that is historical in nature. That's where the, a lot of the revenue insurance department started. But a lot of it is functional because CFOs can see good use for revenue insurance as I, I like to call revenue insurance 
the CFO's SWAT team, where they can address wherever the revenue issues are and they can work with the marching orders of the CFO in order to make sure that the revenues of the firm are protected. There's another group where the revenue assurance team reports to the CEO. These are the cases where the revenue assurance team is much more involved in the proactive issues. They're typically heavily involved in profitability, line of business management, forecasting controls, those kinds of things. It is not uncommon to find a revenue assurance group working in the billing department. And that's usually because that's the first place revenue assurance comes up and it's the most logical place for a revenue assurance department to be spawned. The problem is, is that the billing operations department has a narrow scope and pretty soon people realize that for revenue assurance to do their job, they need a, a bigger platform than what the billing department can give them. When we get into the one, two, three percentage area, you find those revenue assurance departments that report to esoteric groups, chief risk officer, chief business continuity officer, CIO, CTO. Um, those often happen because of political convenience, because there's a particular person who used to be a CFO and he's changed jobs and he keeps the revenue assurance group with him, or there's a particular executive that has an affinity for these kinds of issues. So those things will come up and those things are clearly important and need to be considered. The most important issue when you're scoping out and determining the positioning of your revenue assurance department is to define the scope. And there are three scope areas to consider. Which technologies do you want them to work with? Each technology family, for example, GSM or LTE or WiMAX or Fiber, each of those technology families brings with them an entire boatload of controls issues. And the team has to learn a lot of technological specific things in order to be effective. So the more technology domains you put on the revenue assurance team, the less they're gonna be able to do a good job in any one particular area. The second issue is the line of business domains, and, and this is very controversial. Um, some of the biggest needs for revenue assurance functions are in specific lines of business like interconnect or billing, or, or I'm sorry, or uh, roaming, OTT, IPTV. These are areas where the relationship with the partners, the complexity of the technology, the complexity of billing and settlement relationships really call out for the need for a lot of revenue assurance functionality. But because of the politics of those line of businesses, often revenue assurance does not get invited. So it's important to be clear about the boundaries around which lines of business revenue assurance is gonna work in. And finally, we have the operational domains. Revenue assurance is a political process. It's a people process. It's a process of the revenue assurance team working and partnering with different operational areas. So those operational domains you declare as in scope are those places where you can expect to get the best results. So if you're thinking about where your revenue assurance team belongs, these are the kinds of questions you need to be asking. So partnered with this presentation, we have provided what we call our revenue assurance positioning survey. This is something we make available to all the GRAPA mem members, and it's designed to help your executive team and your revenue assurance management team think through the issues and to help you clarify your thinking about what to expect from the RA team and to help everyone understand how to best place it within the organization. So what you should do is distribute this survey to your CEO and CFO certainly, and then any other executive or head of department that is a thought leader or an influencer, anybody that th you think is gonna have good input into how best to position the revenue assurance department, where it should go, who should be in charge of it, how many people should be in it, and what their charter should be. So the RA positioning problem is really the first step on the road to building proper charters, mission statements, and KPIs for your revenue assurance group. So the answers of this survey can be used by the revenue assurance team. They can be passed between the executives, and they can be very helpful in helping you think through exactly how best to position your RA group. So this is Rob Madison. Thank you for listening in on this presentation, and I hope you can make some good use out of the Revenue Assurance Positioning Survey.